people usually write it like this, force times distance times cosine theta, but I prefer to write it like this because it shows that the purpose of the cosine theta is to isolate just one component of f. We're just trying to isolate the component of f that's parallel to the movement. <coughs> Okay, but you shouldn't hardly even need this formula. If you just use this formula, you already know how to break things into components. You already know how to break things into components. This is just reminding us that the way how to break this into components. So what does theta stand for? Theta is the angle between the force and the velocity. Theta is the angle between the force and the velocity. So that's important to have in your notes. Theta is the angle between the force and the velocity. Why do we keep focusing on the velocity? Just to get the direction of movement. So theta is basically the angle between the force and the direction of movement. Theta is the angle between the force and the direction of movement. Um, so what does this symbol stand for? Parallel. Parallel to what? To the velocity. Right. So this is the component of the force that's parallel to the velocity. That's easy to forget because there's no v in this formula. But this is the component of the force that's parallel to the velocity. OK, good. So is this force? So here we have an object that's moving to the left. Is this force doing positive work or negative work? Positive. Oh, no, negative. Because it's anti-parallel to the velocity. It doesn't matter that this might be in the positive direction. What matters is comparing it to the velocity. This force is slowing the object down. So it's doing negative work. What could you say about the work done by F3? It is doing no work. So what would the work by F3 be? Yeah, it's perpendicular to V, so it's not doing any work. What could we say about the work done by F2? Um, it's doing positive work. Because it's in the same direction as the velocity, speeding us up. And what can we say about the work done by F4? It's also doing positive work. Because this has a component that is speeding the object F, F parallel. So this would also be positive. Good. So before we can do some problems, we need uh, one more concept, which is potential energy. Has your instructor started talking about that in class? Yeah, she talks about potential kinetic and thermal. Okay. On your problems, you're actually not going to see, you're going to see very little that deals with thermal energy. So we'll focus on the kinetic and the potential energy. Now, there are two different types of forces. There's conservative forces and non-conservative forces. What's the difference between a conservative force and a non-conservative force? Conservative forces have potential energies. Non-conservative forces have no potential energy. So we only have to learn about cons uh, potential energy for conservative forces. And there's actually only a few conservative forces that you're going to learn about in this course. The conservative forces you're going to learn about are um, gravity and the spring force. These are the only conservative forces you'll see this semester. The only conservative forces you'll see this semester are gravity or the spring force. Everything else this semester will be non-conservative. Everything else will be non-conservative. 
if it's not gravity or the spring force. So we're only, only going to have to learn about two types of potential energy. Next semester, you'll learn one more conservative force, which is the electric force. Next semester, you'll study the electricity. That's also a conservative force, but you won't get to that this term. So these are the only conservative forces you'll see this term. OK, um, what's another name for the gravitational force on an object? What's another name? What's our name for the gravitational force on an object? For example, we kind of call rope forces tension. Uh, weight. Yeah, that's right. So another way of putting this is that the weight is a conservative force. So we deal with that every, almost every single problem. Everything has a weight. Springs don't come up that much. So spring energies don't come up that much. But gravitational energy applies to just about every problem because pretty much everything has a weight. So we'll focus more on the gravitational energy. Um, do you remember if, like, from chemistry, do things like to increase or decrease their potential energies? We usually think of things trying to increase or decrease their energy in chemistry. <laughs> Decrease. <laughs> Everything wants to lower its energy. Remember that low energy means more stable. Kind of in ordinary life, you say that people like having high energy, right? If, if someone has high energy, you think like, oh, they're peppy and happy. But that's not the interpretation in chemistry and physics. In chemistry and physics, low energy means good and stable. So potential energy is the kind of thing that things want to decrease. So when potential energy is high, would we think of the object as being happy or unhappy when the potential energy is high? Unhappy, and when potential energy is low, we would think of it as being happier. So let's try to get a formula for gravitational potential energy. Well, do um, do objects like to move higher or lower? If an object had its way, like if I rate, if I drop, if, well, if I let go of this eraser, would it move up or down? Down. Down. Just that the, the very word "drop" tells us what we, what we do. Um, so. Um, when an object gets higher, is it getting um, higher or lower potential energy? Higher. higher because it's getting less happy. Objects want to move down. We know that because if we let go of the object, it would move down. So should I put height here in the numerator or the denominator? Yeah. yeah. Well, it turns out that the full formula for gravitational energy is this, mgh. Is that, does that say gravity u? Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have been more careful. The symbol that we use for potential energy is capital U. The symbol for potential energy is capital U. Sometimes you'll see people use a capital P for potential energy, but I think it's more common to use capital U. That's right, although that's lowercase p. But we're also going to use uppercase P for uh, power, say. So yeah, P has already been used for other things. So people tend to use U for capital U for potential energy. Capital K for kinetic energy and capital U for potential energy. But remember, there's different types of potential energy. There's gravitational potential energy. There's spring potential energy. Next semester, you'll learn about electrical potential energy. So I have to specify that now I'm talking about the gravitational potential energy. So this is just to say gravitational potential energy. This is the energy that, you, that comes from weight, from the weight force. So this stands for gravitational potential energy, uh, MGH. So it's that the higher you are, the greater your gravitational potential energy. Just to give you a couple interpretations of that. Let's say I have an object on a table. And let's say I tell you that it has a gravitational energy of 6 joules. By the way, what would be its energy when it's on the ground? How can you see that from the formula? Yeah, h would be 0. So when you're on the ground, your energy is zero. So how do we interpret it that at this point, the object has six joules of energy? One way to interpret that is this means um, it would take six joules of work to move from the ground, to move the object from the ground to this table. It would take six joules of work to move the object from the ground to this table. There's a very close relationship between work and energy. Well, it would take six joules of work to move the object from here to here. Usually what we care about is not energy, but changes in energy. 
Suppose I move the object from here to here, would its delta u be positive or negative if we move from lower to higher? Positive. Yeah, let's say it's positive 2 joules. How would we interpret that? What does it mean that the delta u for moving from here to here is positive 2 joules? It means it took 2 joules of work to move the object from here to here. So we can interpret the change in potential energy in terms of how much work we would have to do. 